man from Mars, or somewhere in outer space. <laughs> I visited this university several years ago and had a good time then and it's good to be back to see you again although I don't recognize you students because you're a new group. Things have changed and things have moved on. Today I'm going just to speak for a very short time about challenges, one challenge and you probably may think of throwing me out of the university <laughs> after I've spoken. <laughs> but I'm not speaking about this university, I'm speaking about education worldwide. There are numerous papers coming out and books addressing that issue. It happens to be true. And we've got to face it and face it head on if we're going to move forward. And by the time I'm finished, you may feel like that. <laughs> Smoke coming out of your brains. <laughs> Frustration. But I'm going to try and be positive at the end. And give some pointers to possible ways forward. Not just for this university, but for educational research worldwide. There's a great deal of activity going on in Pakistan, and I commend you for what is going on. A great deal of development. We are dealing with a worldwide problem, not unique in any way to this country. Famous author said that about educational research. Demeaned by scholars in other fields, ignored by practitioners, alternatively spoofed and criticized by politicians, I'm sure not you, Policy makers are members of the public at large. An American author said that at the dawn of the 21st century, education is finally being dragged kicking and screaming into the 20th century. And he goes on to say that the most important reason for the extraordinary advances in medicine is the acceptance by practitioners of evidence as the basis of practice. Would you go to a doctor and undergo surgery on the basis of his opinions or the opinions of the public? He would do it on evidence, medical evidence. Education has sagged in this and there's a problem. Those who plan education and those who deliver it. Now I have been a teacher. I have been a head teacher. I have directed a research centre for a long time. I'm also in a very unusual position that I have researched in three different disciplines, of which education is only one. One is a science and one is a humanities. And I see other departments have worked across the university. There's a problem, but I think school teachers are the greatest of all, because they have the toughest job of all. And there's this uneasy relationship but here's the problem. There's a barrier between that and both of these. And we need to break that barrier down. And it's a worldwide problem. You're reflecting what's happening elsewhere. I speak of my country, that's very true. Because you once went to a dentist, would you dare to tell the dentist what treatment to give you? Why should education be treated differently? And the school teachers, if you talk to them, they don't think the research is of much help to them. We've got to listen. They do the real job of teaching and the real work. So we have a problem that we've got to address, and it's a worldwide problem. This is what research shows. I believe in research really strongly. Teaching is a very demanding job. Research has been done on that and shown that it's in the top three of the most pressurized jobs in any civilized society. Current educational research is offering very little help. Talk to the teachers, they'll tell you that. They don't go and read research manuals, journals. 
talk to a doctor, half my family are doctors. They read the research journals in medicine as practicing doctors. We have a difference, we've got to look at that. We've got to make it so it's intelligible. We dress it up in fancy language. But basically, that's the problem. I have trained endless people, I'm not a teacher trainer. But I've got that back from many countries. Yes, we'd love to do this, but we're not allowed to. Because the examinations force us to do it this way. The school inspectors force us to do it that way. They're not free to change. The teachers are not the problem. They don't decide the curriculum. They don't decide the assessment. They don't decide the textbook. They don't decide the resources. And they can't even choose the students they want to teach. So why blame the teachers? That's a worldwide fact. Research has shown it. So we've got a problem facing education, a real challenge in the world. And it comes back to research. I'm quoting some very famous people here. If you're doing research and you don't know what you're doing, you're doing it right. Because you're going into the unknown. You don't know what to expect. If you know what to expect, it's not research. That's what the famous physicist said. If we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? We plan it far too much. And somebody still alive today, a great writer, if you get hold of his books, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come within the original. You don't learn from success, you learn from mistakes. <coughs> True, isn't it? And yet what do we do with our school students, our university students? Oh, you've got it wrong. That's how we learn. Let's go back a bit. If we look at other subject disciplines, majority of them do not have research proposals. My research centre had about 20 research students at a time. We never used research proposals because they closed the doors. It's not real research. If you look at other disciplines across the university, and I had a job for two years working right across the whole university with staff, they don't use research questions. My students didn't use research questions. That's the fashionable one today. Look at other departments across the university, they don't use research paradigms, they just do the research. My students never use research paradigms. Look at other departments across the university, they don't write a chapter of methodology. They just get on and do it by sensible means. My students never do that. And we don't bring up research recommendations at the end, which are addressed to nobody and usually can't be implemented because the teachers are not free to implement them. Too many controls over them. That achieves nothing either. We've got to think about what we're doing. You may find this very uncomfortable. You may be angry with me. You may be furious with me. Good. Let's address that issue and say we've got something wrong. If you look out to other disciplines, they're doing it differently. And the one thing about the students I had, I expected them to publish in international journals jointly with myself or our supervisor, and they did, sometimes in large quantities, because they had broken away from the controls of education research. That's what was done. That's the big challenge I put to you. I believe in research because it moves things forward into the future to something new, to something better, a different way of doing it, a way that's more successful, that achieves something we want to achieve. We've done that. Look at the other disciplines. They're making the breakthroughs. Just look at medicine. We're studying the learning. We're studying the human body. The two things are in parallel. We can learn so much. <coughs> Physicist said that to me. He put himself through a master's in educational research. 
He's right. Throw out the search proposals, you may find that very uncomfortable. It's not the way other departments do it. I went online and looked at the adverts for students, and I can think of one department that said, we do not want research proposals. A world-shattering department with breakthroughs all the time. They didn't do it good. But it wasn't education. That's what we've done. We've killed it. Let's liberate it. And you can lead the world in it, right here, here, and do something that's different and better. See, by systematizing it, we know too much, we close down, we're not getting it something new, something different. We're not making the breakthroughs. Therefore, teachers are not seeing it as relevant and useful. And we've got to listen to their voice because they do the real work. We know too much. Very quickly as I finish, I took an international education conference, I speak an awful lot of them. 72% of over 300 papers involved opinion gathering through interviews, focus groups and questionnaires. Would you run medical research that way? Would you run, would you build your bridges in the basis of engineering research that way? Would you do the breakthroughs in drug production that way in chemistry? And most of them didn't even recognize that Flickr was a man. And he's referenced, he published his paper in 1932, and it's brilliant. And we've never read his paper because he doesn't say what we're doing. He was away ahead of us. And he wasn't working in education. Now I happen to teach statistics. I'm sorry about that. 